Hi everyone. Making a multi-book journal today. So I wanted to tea dye some copy paper and then I thought what am I going to do with it? And then I saw this video. Um, I think it's Yana's Creations. I'll put the name and link below in the description of this video and I thought it was just amazing um, so I decided to go ahead and try and make it I didn't have any measurements I just went with um, the size of the copy paper so that was going to determine the height of the book and also the width so I think it was 8 inches by 11 inches I think so um, now I'm I've cut all the um, paper down and now making the binding template and I use the Coptic binding method which you can find anywhere on the web there's so many videos of it So I'm just positioning the um, holes and I'll use this template to pierce the holes in the papers. Yep, seven holes, Jen. I didn't know whether it was going to work out. Um, I was just going blind. I thought, well, I loved it and I wanted to make you know have a go at making it so I did and I'm so glad I did because it I think turned out pretty good so that's just an old telephone directory that I'm using to help me get those holes pierced in the right spots and I mark the top of the pages based on the top of the um, binding template there. Whether I continue that throughout or not is another thing. Pretty much even top and bottom so. Now I'm taking some paper because I didn't have enough of the copy paper, the tea dyed copy paper to make the signatures so I took this paper pad I think it's called lifetime from Prima and I tried to select papers that were not directional and I th yeah I cover each of the um, signatures with a piece of that paper and because there's minimal um, leftover piece that I need to cut down for the 8 inches that it was just easier to use my craft knife rather than um, the trimmer I mean it would have probably worked with the um, designer paper but the tea dyed copy paper was too thin and it kept ripping so I just continued that so I have signatures of five so four copy papers and one pattern paper per signature and I'm just looking now to see how many signatures I have so I've got in each book one two three four yeah I have five signatures of five pages in each book so the five pages are oh well they're just five signatures of five pages folded over in both the 
larger pieces and the smaller. So pretty much the smaller are just cut in half again. Yeah, here I go trying to cut the um, tea dyed copy paper and it doesn't do too well. But if you've watched my other videos, there was a journal page that I made using all these leftover strips that I'm cutting off there. And I use my scoreboard to fold the papers in half and score them. Rather than scoring them and then folding them over. tends to get them um, pretty much right each time depending if I've cut the paper straight or crooked so here I am creating the smaller booklets and I think some of these papers are coffee dyed as well but I really love the way the um, tea tea dyed papers looked okay so here they are put trying to work out how they go together yep think I'm on the right track So here I've taken that piece, the binding template, and just cut it down. And it worked right, great. Oh, so here I am mixing it up here. So binding them one at a time. And I like the curved needle for this. It gets in underneath and through a lot easier than a straight needle. As I said earlier, I'm not giving a tutorial on the binding, the Coptic binding, as there are so many out there who could show it a lot better than me. Barb Owen from Barb Owen Designs has um, a brilliant tutorial on the Coptic binding Barb's the one I go to when I can't remember. Starting off is the hardest. And I'm using um, hemp. Tw no, I'm using waxed thread. Waxed linen thread for the binding here. And there's a lot to it, hence the long video once again. That's two long ones in a row, sorry. Just checking to make sure it all looks good. So here is it 
in its raw form how it should be looking together once put together. So now I'm taking the chipboard and just painting it white. Probably should have painted it a darker colour but I'm just um, applying some gesso on it. And I apply the gesso on both sides. Now I'm going to put the um, bind the signatures using some um, what's it called? I think it's just binding cloth, which was pretty much paper, I think. And I'm using Aileen's tacky glue. I started off using a liquid glue because most use a PVA glue, I think, but it just didn't work out. It would have seeped through too easily. So Aileen's tacky it is. Using my silicon spatula to thread it, oh, spread it through. And just positioning it on that binding cloth. Making sure it hasn't seeped through to the signatures, which it did in a few instances, but I'm not too fussed about that. It ripped the pages a bit. If you wanted to, you could put some acetate in between each signature. Looking back, I probably should have done that. I did later on. So just making that stuck to all edges of the signatures. And making sure... Yeah the insides not too glued together and the pages open freely see there I ripped that there that doesn't worry me I'm just going to use this as a um, journal a daily journal some of those pages like the backs of the pattern paper I may paint to a journal an art journal type page on some of them Others I might just use stickers or whatever, but I don't think I'll write. I could on that one. So just making sure it doesn't um, join onto the front and back pages on the fronts. Now coming along and painting the back sides of these chipboard pieces. These are for the um, 8 inch papers. And now, well, got to mitre the um, edges there. Forgot about that before I applied the glue. Now this is where these chipboard pieces come in. And you'll see there I've got a um, piece of non-stick craft mat there which um, is catching the glue that falls off the um, binding piece. having a bit of trouble with the first one here making sure it's all aligned opens quite freely. Happy with that one. And do the same to the other 8 inch set of signatures.
was really hard to get it on the edges of the um, signatures there without it sticking to the back of the pages. So now I'm um, preparing to adhere the chipboard piece to the other journal. No, nope, to that same one, yep. So one goes on one side and the other goes on the other and I put it back to the front so they were both opening the same way but these should be opening opposite ways. And that binding cloth really blends in well on that white gessoed piece of chipboard. So one piece between the of those two and then I have to add it a piece to the um, front and back of the up uh, well the combined piece now just did that did I do the same video twice don't know anyway there's a piece of chipboard between those two large um, bound signatures and then we have to go ahead and put the um, chipboard on the front and back now stuck together there. That's where I should have put some acetate to protect the pages. And there. And there. Oh well. Loving some of those tea dyed papers. Alright, now I'm on to the smaller journals. So again, painting some gesso on both sides of the chipboard, which is half the size of the larger pieces. Yeah, you'll note I've got a jacket on here. Finally, I'm starting to feel cool. Looking forward to winter. sticky glued hands all over the front there. You'll see here I've got the acetate between the signatures there but I forgot to put it on the front I think. Can't remember. Can't see it there. It's just a production line with these little ones. Now I'm peeling off that acetate. That really helped. So if I can give you any piece of advice, that would be it. Use the acetate between your signatures. Now 
there we go the four smaller ones done and the two larger ones done so now we are adhering the small <coughs> excuse me the smaller ones to the um, large um, chipboard pieces again using Aileen's tacky glue it was just a lot easier and I know it's a good glue yeah my little um, spatula broke the handle hubs fixed it for me though he put a um, a paintbrush handle in there and um, wrapped some piece of metal around it I think very thin piece and um, epoxied it in works like new pretty much doing the same thing I did to the larger um, signature groups as I am to the smaller ones except the smaller ones only have the chipboard on the front because they glued to the larger back um, the back is glued to the larger pieces of chipboard Alright, so I set them aside for a couple of hours with some heavyweight books on top while I do the others. See my handle's getting smaller and smaller there. making sure the um, little booklets open up freely could have probably done with a little bit extra space but it's okay don't have to put too much pressure on them Okay, she's done. Well, now I have to cover them. Already covered that side, but I'll sh I show you how I do the other side. And this is just a piece of my patchwork fabric, 100% cotton. And I thought, because it was fabric, that I'd use Helmar 450 quick dry adhesive because I did note later on that the Scotch quick dry and Aileen's tacky sort of mark the fabric so I'm glad I used this really burnish that well with the bone folder on my hands just making sure that glue spread out and making sure there's room in the center there so that the um, covers, covers can open up freely so now we just cover it like a book like we normally do so mitre those corners 
open the, that um, spine area. Uh, I just used Scotch Quick Dry on the inside because that gets covered anyway with paper. Corners were a bit iffy. But they get covered anyway later on. Again, using the acetate to make sure that the glue doesn't stick the pages together. Now I'm just going to put some glue on those little tab tabs there where the spine is and fold it back in. And that's how we did it. Again, some heavy weight on it. Take out the um, acetate and it opens and closes quite freely. Okay. Now I have to. What am I doing now? Ah the um, closure. So I'm taking some tin caps I think they are. They're just pieces of round pieces of tin and I use that plus a rare earth magnet. So I've taken a piece of the same cloth that I use for the covers and um, sewed it up, pulled it inside out. My goodness that was an effort and stuck the um, well it's in there loose I haven't glued it in there um, when I do come to find the size that I need I um, squish some glue in there maybe not on this one because it was thinner than the other one I didn't measure so one one of the um, ends is thicker than the other so here I am trying to turn this piece inside out. I did um, think about the next one that I did and didn't make it so long. Okay, so I had to sew the end there. And now I've got to turn it back in the right way again, which I did. No, I cut it down first. Clever move, Jen. So now just um, tidying up that end area. And in goes the piece of tin. It was a bit of a tight fit. But it worked, and they stick together. Okay, decided to use Aileen's tacky glue here. Ah, oh, there I am, yeah. I go in and push some glue inside there, so the magnet or tin piece doesn't slip up. Yep, heavy weights again. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just running blind here. Yep, that works well. Again, using the acetate to protect the pages. And there, where I put that um, Aileen's tacky, it 
really has discolored it. I go al I come along later and do something to it. So now I've cut down another. Oh, I can't remember. Was this Tim Holtz? Could have been paper pad. Again, oh, I think it was the. Well, it may not have been Tim Holtz because it was eight and a half by eleven, or uh, A4. Sorry. So not one ounce of score tape used on this project. Getting a clean wet one there. Okay, just stick that on, sort of centre it a bit. And I wanted um, that right side to be stuck on the front page. I also burnished where the closure was sitting so it didn't pull up too, too free, freely. So there I go there. I'm going to do that to all four of the um, smaller booklets. And I've decided, instead of putting it right side up and opening the page from the left to right, that I would use um, each of the journals by the way it opens. So I turn over, turn it around and open it. So here I'm just taking a Q-tip and some water and trying to dissolve that glue to clean it up a bit. So now taking some corners, metal corners, and just putting those on all four corners of each opening area. And using some, um, goodness, can't remember what they're called. They're not pliers, but similar. Just to push them in, secure them properly. And I used the silver, and I thought it looked better on the um, blue. But then again, I used gold later on. For something else so yeah it is what it is yeah I've realized I've got to put um, paper on the larger page covers too so I end up doing that Yep, now comes the um, gold paint marker. Makes a huge difference. Especially where one of the um, books has got the binding cloth on there. So you can see it more clearly there that was wider than the other pages. Yeah, I still got to do the inside back covers of each of those. So I thought I'd go around with the um, paint pen and apply some gold around there because the pages are not going to cover completely the complete area so I thought that was probably the best thing I could do there. So I used Aileen's Tacky on the outside edges and then um, Scotch Quick Dry on the inside burnishing it well. And I do edge the um, 
design a paper before I apply it or before I adhere it under the page. I think maybe one I've forgotten that's why I go around eventually after it's glued down. All good. Yeah, ran out of the Scotch Quick Dry in the original bottle. So using the fine point bottle there. Yeah, this is the one I forgot to do the um, gold edging. So you just go around it. Worked a treat. Yeah, the drying time involved in this was <laughs> just painful. So these are triple frames offset. It's a, an unbranded die. So I really like it because I thought it needed a bit more than just the corners. And this is a brilliant way of applying glue to something with a lot of detail. Just use a um, sponge just for your gluing. Put it in a um, Ziploc bag um, for until you need it again. It's perfect. Now as I'm going to use this as a journal for like a daily journal thought I'll just use a scroll and a um, ink, pe ink pen and quill, uh, ink quill and ink, ink well and put those on there. I was going to use the um, quill and the well together with the scroll but I thought that that was better and I can put a um, message on the front the title. Now I wanted to use the silver on the black scroll so I'm going through and trying so many different markers but none of them that I had would show up on the black. So I think I used three or tried three different markers. No, and not one of them worked. So I go back to Old Faithful white jelly roll pen just um, trying to work out how I'm going to write it and it needed some white over the other side. Just to define it a bit better. And there it is. Can't believe I did it. So happy with it. So what I did on the front, I did on the back. Yeah, see there, one of the um, closures on each side was larger than the other, but um, I can live with that. I love the different 
um, colours and textures of the pages of the tea dyed. Yep, see, so I turn around there and start writing that way. Mm hmm. showing you how it's working love it um, yeah so go and have a look at Yana's video that's the one I watched to see how to make it and if you don't want to make it I think she sells them so um, yeah, it took a couple of weeks probably with all the drying time and and um, pushing myself actually because it was a very repetitive process but I really loved how it started coming together and very pleased with myself. You can see there a bit of glue. I'm going to have to work at those and do something with the pages I've ripped. But anyway, it is what it is, and I'm so happy with it. So, if you're stuck here till now, thank you so much for hanging with me and putting up with me, with me through this process. And haven't done a journal page in a while, so probably need to get to that. So, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll be back soon with another video. Uh, please comment below if you um, if you want me to try something else to show you, or if you've got questions about this. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.